I'm wearing my brown shirt today because we're talking about how to get into Brown University today. Brown is one of the most sought after of the universities in the United States. It's very selective. Let's talk about how to get in. Number one, below this video is a link to my How to Get into the Ivy League Ethically article. Read it carefully. It was written pre-pandemic, but it basically holds true to, to this day. Uh, try to do everything mentioned in that article and you will set yourself up to have a very strong foundation, but it won't be enough. Beyond what's in that article, I want you to realize that every question on the Brown application, including the Brown specific supplement, is an opportunity to further differentiate yourself and impress the admissions officers at Brown so as to elbow your way ahead of your competition. Let's talk about some of the key areas where that is obviously true. Most notably in the section of the application known as the supplement. That is all Brown specific questions. And I wanna talk about elements of it right now. Number one, even the question of what your first choice concentration is or your second choice concentration is, these things play a little role in determining if you have an edge over other applicants or not. I think you need to be authentic, most importantly, but if you have a backstory that would make it believable that you should be or would be interested in some of the more undersubscribed majors at Brown, uh, even a history, even, you know, like a philosophy or a, uh, you know, like a random major like German studies or something, if they exist and they seem like sort of avant-garde or less popular uh, based off of just current events, which, you know, those types of majors are these days not nearly as popular as more pre-professionally focused majors, uh, then definitely consider switching it up a little bit in terms of what major you select or your intended concentration, because that could, uh, as long as it's authentically aligned with what you've pursued in the past and you can make the argument uh, to that extent, uh, later on in the supplement, that can even give you a slight edge. Where the real edge comes in is later on, or in other places of the supplement. Number one, applying early decision to Brown gives you a huge leg up compared to applying regular. You have a three times higher shot of getting into Brown early decision, statistically speaking, than you do by applying regular. So if your family can swing it financially and it is really your first choice, seriously consider applying to Brown early decision, because that's going to just up the odds right there statistically in terms of giving you the best shot of admission. Beyond that, right in the third section of the supplement, Brown is very straightforward with the fact that they are happy to receive a resume from you. You don't need to do it at all. And many students will not upload an optional extracurricular resume on the Brown supplement. And those students are fools. You are not a fool you are going to upload an optional extracurricular resume to the Brown Supplement to learn how to put together a beautiful resume that puts front and center the things that make you special and shows the depth and breadth of what you've achieved during your high school career. Click below this video to my course, How to Build an Extraordinary Extracurricular Resume. It's a short course, it's extremely cheap, but it's so valuable because regardless of whether you're an actor, you're an athlete or somewhere in between, or everything, you you will be able to build a resume that highlights your strengths and differentiates you after reviewing that course or re taking that course. And again, it takes like less than an hour. So definitely consider uh, doing that because that's going to help you build the resume to the standard that I want you to build it for for a school like Brown. Below the option to upload an optional resume, you also have the opportunity to share a link to your online presence. So this could be a LinkedIn profile, I guess, but I would much more rather look at it as like a TikTok channel or a YouTube channel, or maybe you just have a yourname.com and basically you have an online portfolio of your written work or your creative works, um, artistic works, whatever you may call it. Maybe just pictures of a highlight reel of you playing a sport or doing some gymnastics. I don't know what it is, but if you have an online home that you would be proud to share with Brown, you can of course include it uh, in that link. 
and many of my students for years were including those links on their extracurricular resume. Now Brown is giving you a wonderful shot to just include the link right in the actual body of their supplement so that they can click on it on their back end and they will want to see what you want to show them. Uh, if you don't have an online home or presence, don't feel like you need to create it for Brown for this very purpose. Um, but if you do, make sure it's clean, make sure it's presentable, make sure it's something you'd be proud to share. And um, this could be an amazing shot, again, to differentiate yourself on the Brown supplement. Further down on the Brown supplement, you also have the opportunity to dis uh, share or describe the people that you've interacted with that represent Brown. They specifically ask, we would like to know how you found out about Brown. Please identify the options from the list provided that were most influential in your decision to apply. And this could include everything from a Brown University coach or a publication to um, a member of the Brown uh, you know, admissions team, uh, community-based organization, a family member or friend. Uh, if you do click on these, and you can add up to 10, believe it or not, they also will ask you to name these people. Um, and so this is a way to sort of build out your network, if you will, if they exist. If there's a current, for instance, Brown student or an alum, you name that person there. And so the more connections you have that are true, again, don't make anything up, but if they are true, uh, Brown likes to see, oh, you're, fr you're friends with a current student in the junior class or uh, your mom went there or something, you know, something. All these connections you should list there if you've been in contact with a coach or a professor, these are things that you should list there so that they can understand how engaged have you been with Brown. Uh, Brown clearly likes to see proof of prior contacts and interest because of just that. It demonstrates that you've been interested enough to make the connections with people and to sort of have that light bulb go off and say, oh, they went to Brown, or maybe they explicitly told you you would be a great fit for Brown. So definitely don't rush through that section and fill it out accurately and completely. Below that is where the biggest bulk of the action is in terms of how to get into Brown, and that is in Brown's writing supplement. Um, I will say this, Brown is a school whose supplement I think is relatively easy uh, because they're not asking you to produce long, a long written work, like another 650 word essay like you see on the common portion of the common app. Brown's question number one is Brown's open curriculum allows students to explore broadly while diving deeply into their academic pursuits. Tell us about any academic interests that excite you and how you might use the open curriculum to pursue them while also embracing topics with which you are unfamiliar. This is a forward-looking essay. If you spend more than one sentence or two max talking about the past, you're wasting words. You should be painting a picture with words of you engaging in Brown's open curriculum specifically as possible based off of your current understanding of it and your current interests. Um, so definitely make sure that it's doing just that, painting a picture with words of you harnessing the power of Brown's open curriculum in particular, embracing the topics uh, that you are interested in, in majoring in, but also um, embracing topics with which you are unfamiliar so that they can see that you're going to be pushing the boundaries of your comfort zone. Uh, again, do not frame this around an extracurricular of the past or write more than two sentences max about you know what led you to this point. Look forward. Uh, instead of looking back. Otherwise, structure it like a typical essay. Introductory sentence is your thesis. Next few, few sentences uh, or paragraph at most is your body. And then one final uh, paragraph at most or a few sentences as your conclusion. Try to say something new in the conclusion. The next essay, Brown's, you only have 250 words for that one, and the next one, and the next one. The second one is Brown's culture fosters a community in which students challenge the ideas of others and have their ideas challenged in return, promoting a deeper and clearer understanding of the complex issues confronting society. This active engagement in dialogue is as present outside the classroom as it is in academic spaces. Tell us about a time you were challenged by a perspective that differed from your own. How did you respond? This is the backward looking essay. This is paint a picture of how you've actually behaved in an environment when you were challenged or engaged with someone who did not share your views, did not have the same conclusions as you did. Uh, this is an amazing opportunity to show yourself as a mature young adult uh, and you want to basically show and tell a, a riveting story here 
uh, and hopefully one that has an outcome that makes you more likable by the end of the essay than you are in the beginning of the essay. So definitely keep all that in mind. Again, structure it like a traditional essay, even though you only have 250 words, a one to two sentence intro with a thesis, a body paragraph or so on average, and then maybe a concluding sentence or two um, to wrap it all up. Show how you changed. That's really important because, um, you know, Growth is something that colleges love to see, particularly these high-end colleges like Brown, but also for this one in particular, show depth. Take time to not only show, but then reflect. Reflect on that interaction, what you learned from it, even if you didn't change your mind because the other person didn't convince you. Um, I'm assuming, again, if you're choosing that topic, uh, you are going to show at least yourself remaining calm, cool, and collected in an environment where you were faced with a different perspective. Yeah, and, and that's gonna show maturity and sort of a, a degree of um, civility that I think, again, Brown is really looking for. Again, this is the backward looking essay. And then finally, the final little short essay for another 250 words is Brown students care deeply about their work and the world around them. Students find contentment, satisfaction, and meaning in daily interactions and major discoveries. Whether big or small, mundane or spectacular, tell us about something that brings you joy. This one is the creative essay. This is the one where basically you can go in any number of directions. You don't necessarily have to show any sort of growth. You just have to revel in something you find fascinating and ideally something that no one else would have been able to share, including you, up until this point. So if you're repeating something that's on your extracurricular resume, or if you're stating something that your teacher recommender is also going to be likely to state in his or her letter of recommendation, I think you fail on this essay. Instead, you should pick some aspect or facet of your personality that is completely random, almost eccentric, but that still sort of is very much tightly aligned with sort of how you see yourself and how you want to present yourself to a school like Brown. There's no right or wrong here. There's only you being authentically you. And therefore, do not try to compare notes with other people who are applying to Brown because then you're trying to copy or mimic. Instead, focus inward and decide with yourself, you know, what is something about myself? Maybe I just do some random thing or like I have, a, you know, some sort of compulsion that I, you know, I eat chocolate on Thursday nights. Or I don't know what it is, but whatever it might be, um, focus on the fact that <laughs> that you, uh, you know, you, you find this, this is important. It, it, it to you, it brings you joy. Maybe you eat that chocolate with your grandfather or you um, go to a particular restaurant that brings back memories of your childhood. Um, you know, this is again, a window into you and your value system in a way that doesn't have to show growth. So you are free to focus on pure joy here, pure revelry, and uh, don't try to be someone else, be who you are with this particular prompt uh, and in your response to it. But as I always say, don't recreate the wheel in terms of structure. Focus on this essay, on creating an, an essay that is still pretty traditionally structured insofar as you have an introductory paragraph, a little one, a few sentence one, with a thesis, a body paragraph that supports the thesis and gives more color commentary or shows more detail in support of the thesis, and then a conclusion that doesn't just restate the thesis, because that's a huge way in which most students fall down on the job, even students at great schools, I find. But also that teach writing well, often just restate the thesis and conclusion. I think that's a disaster. In your conclusion, you want to go a step beyond the thesis. You want to say something new, thought-provoking that leaves the reader wanting more. If you can do that and everything else I've said in this call, you are going to give yourself the best shot of getting into Brown University. It's a selective Ivy League institution. I wish you the very, very best. If you like this video, click like. If you like me and what I've shared, maybe you'll want to see other videos. So subscribe to my channel. And if you want one-on-one -on -one college admissions coaching support, regardless of your age in high school, go to collegemeister.com. That's where you can find out more about me and my services. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Have a great day.